Mark Rogers, TV, talking some Florida football. And I would say over the last 20 or 25 years, this may be the rivalry. You can talk about all the great traditional rivalries, Ohio State, Michigan, Auburn, Alabama, but this might be the one that has showcased the most athleticism year in, year out. It's Florida, Florida State. So if you go back to the late 80s into the 90s when it hit its peak, this has been really special in terms of talent moving on to the NFL and talent displayed by typically teams ranked in the top 10. Bringing in uh, David Waters from Gators Breakdown to help us sort out Saturday's showdown in Tallahassee. David, of course, the last time we saw Jim McElwain on the field, he was beyond ecstatic. I, it wasn't like he was screaming and jumping up and down, but you'd just tell from the look on his face, he was so proud of his team, what they accomplished, fighting through adversity, having to play LSU on the road instead of the date in Gainesville, just everything culminating with that goal line stand. He was just he was just in the moment and just really proud of his Gators. Yeah, and then, you know, it was everything that led up to that game. Florida missed their home game that they were, like you mentioned, they were supposed to have that game in Gainesville, get moved to game, uh, to Baton Rouge. Uh, Florida, by LSU, was questioned for their manhood, uh, that they were scared to play this game. Uh, well, you know, that ticked the players and the coaching staff and the whole program off. So Florida showed up. Uh, ticked off uh, on the field. We had the pregame scuffle with Lena Fournette and, uh, and, this, and uh, DB coach Tori and Gray, uh, where Fournette, you know, gave him a couple little shoves. No big deal there, but you know, maybe you shouldn't put your hands on a on a coach. And after that, Lena Fournette was said he was ready to play, and uh, you know, I think that really just hyped up uh, the pregame scuffle, all the pregame talk. I mean, you know, Florida was just really tired of hearing they had no chance in this game. Um, and they got tired of hearing that they were scared to play this game. So they came out. You know, they were the more physical team, especially in the second half behind Jordan Scarlett. And that defense, you mentioned it in the red zone, they were very opportunistic, uh, you know, forced fumbles um, and, and, and goal line stands over and over again. So uh, they were ticked off, and they played that way. And can they do it on the road again? They struggled on the road, got a big, get, a big win last week, but you got to show up and do it again. All right, Florida offense, Florida State defense. It does not sound like a pretty matchup. The numbers don't speak to much advantage there for the Gators. But I gave my meager little breakdown of what we could expect on Saturday. And the one difference that I see offensively for Florida overall in this matchup and moving on to the SEC championship game is at quarterback versus Treon Harris and what he brought to the table last year. Austin Appleby, not an accomplished quarterback, but he's going to generally make the right reads, and he's a more accurate passer and reader of defense than Treon Harris, who pretty much just ran around after the first guy wasn't open. And then you got a field goal kicker this year in Eddie Pinheiro, who's hit on 16 of 20. So can you kind of break things down when you look at the Gators on offense and Jordan Scarlett coming off a nice game against a tough, tough LSU defense going up against the Knowles? Yeah, I think it starts with Jordan Scarlett. You know, we can sit here and talk about quarterback play, but if the Florida running game's not going, the whole offense isn't going. There's Even with Austin Appleby playing better, this is not a quarterback-led offense. This is a you know downhill running type of offense behind Jordan Scarlett. When he gets going, this offense gets going. And we saw that last week when he just kind of dominated LSU in the second half of that game. Uh, he, he is the bell cow for this offense. So can they get him involved against you know, an up-and-down FSU defense? The type of offenses FSU struggled with are the type of offenses that are up tempo, have a quarterback uh, that can run the ball, a threat there, and you know want to depress the tempo. I mean, Ole Miss, uh, you know, Clemson, Louisville. That's not what this Florida offense does. So Florida's really going to have to get behind Jordan Scarlett and, and, and let him be the bell cow. He needs his twenty carries. They can't abandon the run like they did a couple weeks ago against Arkansas. Uh, Florida needs to stick with the run. You know, the defense is going to keep the game close. You know, that Arkansas game probably was an outlier uh, from what we keep seeing from this Florida defense. So if the, if the defense is keeping this game close, we'll see Jordan Scarlett get his 20 carries. Florida's dwindled down the running back. You know, we, they've four running backs throughout the year. It's been dwindled down to Jordan Scarlett and the Michael P. Ryan right now. So if Austin Appleby can just hit the throws he's supposed to make, convert the third downs he's supposed to make, uh, I, you know, Florida will stay in this game. You know, two weeks ago he was 17 or 21, should have been 19 or 21 against South Carolina for over 200 yards. Did struggle last week at 7 to 17 against LSU. I mean, don't get me wrong, though. A lot of the receivers just weren't open. He did a good job by not really turning the ball over. 
You get the one 90, 98-yard uh, pass to Tyree Cleveland. That was the biggest play of the game and, and the difference in the game. So as long as he takes care of the ball and, and can make third down throws and, you know, one or two throws down the field, I mean, we're starting to see playmakers for this Florida offense right now. We see Antonio Callaway. We see Tyree Cleveland. We see Jordan Scarlett. We see the tight end, Seante Lewis. There are weapons there. The quarterback needs, needs to help give them the ball. But it all starts if they can get some play action going with Jordan Scarlett once he starts you know, establishing him himself. I think that's what you know this Florida offense will try and do. It's going to be tough. I mean, Martez Ivey uh, listed as doubtful now uh, going into this game, so the Florida offensive line is going to shuffle again. Uh, we've seen T.J. McCoy come in at center, who is a very nice surprise there. Third string center, and he's probably playing better than any of the centers have so far this year. Uh, and we, you know, the right side of the line with Jawan Taylor, another true freshman, uh, and Fred Johnson, a sophomore at right guard. I mean, there's a lot of young guys showing their faces on this Florida offense right now.